Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our next example of how to use Lahapro's rule to find the limit for this particular function. If we don't do anything to the function and we let x go to infinity, this becomes infinity minus infinity, which is undefined, but it's not in the right format to use Lahapro's rule. Let's see if we can change the format to come up with something that we'll be able to use Lahapro's rule on. What I'm going to try and do is write this as the limit as x approaches infinity of the quantity 1 divided by x squared plus x to the minus 1 half power minus x. Let's close the parentheses here. Now I'm going to find the common denominator of that. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of the quantity 1 divided by, this would be x squared plus x to the negative one-half power, and then minus x times x squared plus x to the negative one-half power divided by x squared plus x to the negative one-half power. Notice that when I cancel these out, I get back to what I started with. Then writing it over a common denominator, this can now be written as the limit as x approaches infinity of the quantity 1 minus x times x squared plus x to the minus 1 half power divided by the quantity x squared plus x to the minus 1 half power. Now when I plug in the limit, let's see what happens. This is equal to 1 minus infinity times this quantity, so this would also be infinity, to the minus one-half power divided by infinity to the minus one-half power. Now notice when I have one minus this, the one really becomes totally insignificant. This can now be written as minus infinity times infinity to the minus one-half power divided by infinity to the minus one-half power. Then I move that to the numerator and denominator to make that into positive exponents. This becomes minus infinity times infinity to the positive one-half power divided by infinity to the positive one-half power. And basically what I have now is a situation where I have minus infinity over infinity. And therefore, it looks like I can use Lahapodil's rule to try and solve this problem. To do that, I need to find the derivative of that function, or the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. This is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity, let's take the derivative of the denominator. This is a product. Of course, the derivative of 1 is equal to 0. The numerator becomes the first, which is minus x, times a minus 1 half times x squared plus x to the minus 3 halves times the derivative of what's inside, which is 2x plus 1. Since it's a product, it's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second, which is x squared, plus x to the minus one-half power, times the derivative of the first, which would be a minus one. The whole thing divided by the derivative of this, which is minus one-half times x squared, plus x to the minus three-halves, times the derivative of inside, which is 2x plus one. Looks like a big mess, but we can simplify things a little bit because we can divide the x squared plus x to the minus 3 halves into the two terms in the numerator. When we do that, we get the following. This is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of, when we divide this by this, it cancels out. So we end up with a minus x times a minus 1 half, that becomes a plus 1 half. This is now gone times 2x minus 1, or 2x plus 1. Then we divide this by this. Notice that when we divide by negative exponent, we then, and the bases are the same, we then add the positive exponent. So this becomes plus, oh, and the minus here actually becomes minus. This becomes x squared plus x to the first power. Again, I have, x to the, I have the quantity to the minus one half power divided by the same quantity to the minus three halves power. That moves to the numerator, becomes positive. Add exponents, 
I get exponent 1. The minus 1 here makes this into a minus. And then I divide the whole thing by whatever I have left here, which is a minus 1 half times 2x plus 1. Let's continue to simplify the numerator is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity. I multiply this out and I get 1 half times 2 which is 1 times x squared. We get x squared. 1 half x times 1 would be plus 1 half x minus x squared and minus x. The whole thing divided by the denominator, which is minus 1 half times 2x plus 1. Okay, simplifying this a little bit more. This is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity. The x squares cancel out, and this becomes minus 1 half x in the numerator divided by minus 1 half times 2x plus 1. The minus one halves cancel out. Now I have equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of the quantity x divided by 2x plus 1. Again, when we try to plug in the limit, we get infinity over infinity, which still doesn't help us. However, how about if we divide x by 2x plus 1? Longhand division, see what we get. We have x, and we divide that by 2x plus 1. 2x goes into x one half times, because one half times 2x is x, and one half times 1 is plus one half. When we subtract, we get 0 minus one half. We can say that this is equal to one half minus one half divided by the denominator 2x plus 1. So we can rewrite this function as follows. We can say this is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 half minus 1 half divided by 2x plus 1. And now, finally, we can let x go to the limit of infinity. This becomes 1 half minus 1 half divided by infinity plus 1, which means this is 1 half minus 0, or simply 1 half. And that is indeed the limit of that particular function. You see, don't give up easily here. Just keep on going. First, put it into a format where you can check to see if you have the correct parameters or the correct conditions for the Hopital's rule, which we do, infinity over infinity. We can then go ahead and take the derivative of the numerator, the derivative of the denominator, simplify it, continue to simplify it, and finally divide this into x to put into a format where we can now find the limit of the function. And that's how it's done.